gonna start with your transfer case. This unit right here with the drive shaft, uh, the rear drive shaft connects into it. Basically, this distributes the power uh, to all four wheels. Let's talk about this for a second and then why you need to maintenance this thing. It's not so much that the fluid's gonna break down in 25, 30 miles, 25, 30,000 miles, and you're gonna have some kaboom. The reason why is because even though these things are sealed, sometimes moisture, condensation, builds up on the inside of front differentials, rear differentials, and these transfer cases. So that's pretty much the main reason why you drain these would say every 30,000 miles is to get any kind of moisture out there and obviously it doesn't hurt this is a pretty easy job now let's talk about just some tips with um shift on the fly on the fly four-wheel drive this right here this is your actual shift motor so let's say you have shift on the fly and for some reason it goes you put it into four-wheel drive and it won't engage in a four-wheel drive or you in, four in four-wheel drive and you need to go back in two-wheel drive and it does not change look at this thing first um there's just some bolts on this thing and you unplug it and you replace this motor your four-wheel drive fails first thing you need to look at is this if you have an fx4 like i do there's a skid plate protecting your transfer case so, two bolts there. And if you can see, two bolts here. Take these off, that's step one. The bolts are loose. Let's drop this thing. This is really important. Yeah, I can see it, maybe. Your drain. Your fill. Please loosen this first. Common sense will tell you. You loosen this. This one's been good to you. All the fluid comes out. You can't get that one off your SOL. Now, the size is exactly this. Just your ratchet. So, first thing we're going to do, brake torque on this one, loosen it up, then we'll drain the fluid. Remember, everything is righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Now, I didn't reef these things down when I put them back on for reasons like this. If you don't have a breaker bar, just take a metal bar <laughs> and just put it in one end of the ratchet and just push down. So, this one's loose now also. They're both loose. Now we get into the front stuff. You all want to see it come out, don't you? Well, okay. I guess I do have my collection pan right below me. So let's finish this off. Come on, man. Get in there. So before I drain this, I did do it the first time at 40,000 miles. It now has 65. So 25,000 miles later, I'm doing it again. There it goes. I don't know. Can't tell if I think it's dark or not.
yeah, it's a little bit brown. I know you can't see it. I'm, I'm surprised. I didn't think it would be uh, brown after 25,000 miles. I'm gonna wipe off the nut. I already wiped off the, um, right here is also a magnet. The first time you might find metal shavings on there. Don't panic. It's actually supposed to happen. It's kind of normal, um, but I did clean it up the first time. It's still clean this time. Set that aside. I'm gonna go ahead and take the top one off now. And it's really easy to access everything. It really is. Get the other nut, no metal shavings. All right, both nuts are off. Once this is done draining, I'm going to put this nut back in because after that, it's just fill time. It's recommended you clean the threading on these, wire brush, whatever, just to get the gunk off from their thread locker they use at the factory. So clean these off so no gunk builds up in there. We're gonna use this. First one looks better. Second one's cleaned off. Jeez, Kinetic Energy Tandy 5. If, if money's an issue, you know, you don't have to do it yourself. Need me to throw you some money, dude, if money's an issue? It's really not that. You take these things to shops, they charge $130. You saw how easy it was to, you know, bolts are right there in front of you, high one, low one, unscrew, fill. What are you gonna use to fill it with? A cheap $12 part. The reason why I don't like shops doing it is because they freaking torque wrench these things back on there and it could split the casing. I'm telling you that they just sit there with their torque wrench and <laughs> for like five minutes. And to me, it's just, I did it myself. I know it's full. I know it's properly filled. I didn't even spend $130. That's why I do it. But I appreciate the thought. So just like when you're doing an oil change on a car, you know how they say to put a oil on the ring of your oil filter so it doesn't seize on? I'm gonna do the same for uh, for this. I'm just gonna take some of that oil from my oil pan and some of this fluid here, or you could take some gun oil, or you could take some Ballastol, some CLP, whatever you want. Just put a little oil on these threads. And I'm gonna stick it in here. So for starters, we can see it's going in nice. I'm threading it in by hand, no problem. Okay, we have this on righty tighty. I'm not gonna reef it down. I don't care what they say. I mean, what do you think is gonna happen? There's gonna be some kind of extreme pressure in here and blow this plug out for Pete's sake? No. Just gonna make it tight. And then, That's as tight as I want it. I don't need it any tighter than that. This thing's not gonna go flying off of here. Now let's talk about the fill, which goes in right here. Jeez, Kinetic Energy 1085, how are you gonna do that? How are you gonna get a bottle up there and squirt it in? Cheap $12 part, let's do it. This all cheapo right here, $12. It's basically a siphon, that's all it is, it's a siphon. One end and I labeled them, goes in the bottle, okay. This I labeled bottle, this goes into your transfer case. Um, 
So probably won't be able to do the, be the best visual on that, but this one here, you might have to play with it, pump some water to figure out which side sucks and which side blows. But uh, this one goes in the bottle, I have it labeled. This one you shove into your transfer case and as you're pumping, it's emptying the contents of the bottle. So this is the tool we're gonna use. Before I start pumping, full is when it starts pouring out of the top. Let it level itself out. Once it stops dripping out of the top, stick the plug in there. That's actually, per the manual, how you know it's full. It's long enough, um, so I stick the first one in the transfer case. Here's the rest of it. I set the bottle in the bucket just so that if this thing's moving as I'm pumping, it doesn't tip it over. There's the pump. The other half is in the transfer case. Here we go. Pump pumping. <clears throat> Bottles emptying. One bottle is done. You can obviously hear it. It takes under two quarts, but again, once it starts dripping, that's when we're gonna call it the quits. Hold on, this thing keeps flying out of here. Here's the other nut ready to go with fluid on it. Don't start flying out of here again, you putts. Let me hold on to this thing. Just pumping slowly so things don't go squirting out of there. Two quarts and get out of there. Alright, so it's doing its thing. It's full. It's just about two quarts. So this is how you level it off, just let it stop dripping. To me that's good. Screwing our top guy here. And when you're me, you like to clean stuff too. So again, why do I do it myself? No, it's not really a money thing. One, uh, some shop isn't gonna put the wrong fluid in it, not enough fluid in it. Uh, I don't have to worry about someone freaking impacting the freaking drain and fill on there so tight that they never come off again, maybe cracking the freaking casing. And uh, to me, it's not worth $130. Um, go ahead and watch my other video I did about the rear differential. I didn't make video footage of it, but it, it shows you pictures of exact, exactly what you're supposed to do. That was gonna be another $150. I did it myself. Yes, I took the face plate off. Just go ahead and watch the video. Soon I'm gonna be doing the front differential. I have to take off the skid plate, uh, this process is going to be take the one nut out, suck it out with this tool I use. If you watch my other channel, Red Right Return, what I use to change the uh, oil and the wave runner, I'm going to do a suck out and then, you know, fill back in just because there's a cross member right in front of the face plate. That's just going to be insane work. So one day, if the seals start leaking, then I'll have to do it that way. So of course, at the end of one of these jobs, it's always good to have a nice cold brew. I used to drink a different kind of beer for many, many years, up until about three weeks ago, two weeks ago, what was it? Let me recommend a nice, perfect alternative. Semper Fi. You